that the lack of pirates causes global warming, that pirates combat global warming and therefore we should start some pirate schools ASAP. This is an example of correlation, two things whose trends track each other. But science is careful to not yet say that one causes the other. For a serious example, it turns out that left-handed women contract breast cancer at a higher rate than right-handed women. So does left-handedness cause cancer? How does science go about answering that question? Well, it's complicated, but this much is useful for us lay people to know. If two things are correlated, but scientists can't find a way to feasibly explain the mechanism by which one influences the other, that is, they can't explain why one would cause the other, then they are not considered cause and effect. That doesn't mean science says they aren't cause and effect. It just means science says we don't have any reason to believe that they are cause and effect, but they are always open to future ideas and evidence. Sometimes you hear the criticism, scientists can't even predict the weather, so why should we listen to them about something even bigger, like the climate? Well, that's a little bit like saying mathematicians can't even predict how this coin flip will turn out, so why should we listen to their predictions of how a million coin flips turn out? Climate is about averages and overall trends, which are easier to predict than a particular occurrence. Also, the predictions are getting better and better over time. Remember, science never claims to have the exactly correct answer. That's just a misconception and an inappropriate demand by the public and the media. But the self-critical nature of science means that it tends to improve, which incidentally is why it's so disturbing that the predictions of climate change have gotten more dire as time has gone on. But it never is done. Sometimes you hear the criticism, there is no consensus among scientists about human-caused climate change. Newsflash, there's no consensus among scientists about anything. The inherent uncertainty of science means there will almost always be dissent on any scientific issue. Pick the most well-known, well-established scientific law you can think of. Law of gravity, right? Guess what? There's no consensus on it. We've got a satellite up there right now, Gravity Probe B, testing our current understanding of gravity. And you know what it's looking for? I'll give you a hint. Remember the phenomenon of confirmation bias? Scientists are really careful to avoid that, so the probe isn't so much looking for evidence to confirm the theory. It's looking for evidence to contradict it we're actively trying to disprove perhaps the most widely accepted and beloved of all scientific theories. Why? Because we love it so much we want to make it stronger. Looking really hard and conscientiously for contradictory evidence and failing to find it does more to increase our confidence than looking for supporting evidence and finding it. Science is never certain. You know that classic Mentos and Diet Coke reaction? You want to know what the scientific explanation for it is? Why the Mentos make the Diet Coke go crazy? Here it is. No one knows. There's lots of conjecture. It's quite the hot topic in the chemistry education community. So you can find explanations, but the uncertainties associated with them are going to be very large. Why have we not studied it further to reduce those uncertainties? Because it's not worth it. But the more important the issue is, the more research goes into it, and the smaller the uncertainties become. But if you're waiting for there to be no dissent at all, then you'll wait forever, no matter what the scientific issue. It's sort of like with this whole climate change debate. It's easy to find websites giving all sorts of reasons to believe what I already believe, but that doesn't increase my confidence. I want my argument to be rock solid, so I go looking for websites that contradict what I believe. And when I can't find much that's credible, that increases my confidence in my views. It's like testing to see if something is watertight. You look for the leaks, and if you can't find any, then your confidence increases. It feels great to have everyone tell you that you're right, but it's a deceptive, complacent game. The way to really get confident is to go poking at the other side, saying, what's your response to this? How would you contradict this? I've done that quite a bit with my grid argument about global climate change, which is why there are so many bloody minutes of me talking on video as a result. The experience left me bruised and battered, but it left my argument that much stronger. In fact, as I filmed this, an early faulty version of How It All Ends leaked onto dig.com before I could remove it a couple days ago, and I'm heartened that every single criticism I read there was already anticipated and countered in my scripts for these expansion pack videos. It's not because I'm smart, it's because I'm freaking thorough. And if ever there was an issue in human history that is worth being thorough about, wouldn't global climate change seem to be it? With the potential stakes being what they are, what else is more worth our time? Don't we deserve the best, most thorough, most self-critical deliberation on this? How about this objection? Climate models are just models, just predictions about the future, which we can't test until the future actually happens. We don't know what's really going to happen, so they're just conjecture and therefore useless. My response to this, which is a fairly common criticism, is have you ever ridden on a modern airliner? Because they're all designed on the computer, modeled on the computer, tested on the computer model, then physical models, and finally computer models again, which is where the pilots actually learn to fly them. When the Boeing 777 was first flown, all the technicians, managers, and you can bet test pilots were extremely confident that it would fly. Why? Because we've learned how to make good computer models by tweaking them until their output matches what we see in the physical world. Climate models on the computer, for instance, are calibrated with the observed climate of the past. 
If we feed the model the conditions in 1950, and it turns out predictions for the period 1950 to 2000 that closely match what actually happened during that period, then that gives us increased confidence in the predictions it makes when we put in the conditions for 2000 and ask it about 2030. It's been proposed that the greatest knowledge is to know that you do not know. So when you hear pronouncements about how global climate change is bunk, or that we're not the ones doing it, keep that in mind. Now that you understand a bit about the uncertain and tentative nature of science, ask yourself how credible are pronouncements about a scientific issue when they're made with such certainty? Along those lines, I was struck by how many people in the comments to my most terrifying video made absolute statements of truth about the world with absolutely no acknowledgement of uncertainty. A ton of people flat out said humans are not causing the global warming. That's a fact. Other comments I got included, humans are too small to have an effect on the climate. Global warming is a ploy for the elites to grow the government and take away your freedoms. It is true that the climate is changing, but there's a lot of debate about whether we're the ones causing it. Taking action may make things worse. Climate changes all the time. We're coming out of a cold cycle, so this is natural. 100 years of data is not enough to know 1,000 years of past climate. Personally, I don't think global warming is as definitely man-caused as popular media make it out to be. That's my favorite. Personally, I think? We're talking the most complex science in the history of humankind. Chaos theory was discovered studying weather systems. Personally, I think? Who the heck are you to say what the physical truth is? But then I admit I fell into a similar mistake of being absolute, claiming in that video that the only choice is column A. Who the heck are we to think we've got a lock on truth? Have you ever been completely sure of something and then turned out to be wrong? Shouldn't that temper our confidence the next time we feel that way? It should give you pause when the trained person is less certain of themselves than the untrained person. I was certainly humbled by the unexpected explosion in my classroom that I describe in the video, I hope I'm wrong. I guess the bottom line lesson here is that we will probably do better for ourselves and for the whole with some humility. Look, I don't have the answers, and neither probably do you. But we, as a people, as a species, can probably come up with something that's decent. Will it be right? Will it work? We can't know for sure. Will it be better than nothing? Probably. I forget where I read it, maybe it was even a bumper sticker, LOL, but I recently came across a line that I think pretty well sums up the lesson in humility that scientific thinking teaches us and I suspect it may help us make some headway in this whole discussion of what to do about climate change. It's just this. Don't believe everything you think.